Recently, I had to make changes within a legacy system. Sometimes, legacy systems can present a challenge, and this was no different. You see, I needed to add new behavior when a particular event happened, which is fine. The system is event oriented, and in fact, we're already recording the event happened. So all I needed to do was write my listener and wire up in the same convention as all the others. But I started to notice a few strange things about how the system handled messages. All the events were being handled synchronously within the same transaction. Imagine we have a command entering our system called move player. When the move player command is handled, it will call a method on the player entity which will record an event. Player was moved. Now I have a bunch of listeners waiting for this event and each of them are invoked one after another. Everything is generally fine in the system if there are no problems. But if there's a failure in one of those consumers, the blast radius is the transaction boundary. And this includes the command which was otherwise successful. Let's take a look at the difference between domain events and integration events. Domain events exist within a single boundary and they are created to represent an interesting change which has happened within that domain. Consumers within that domain can listen for these events in order to perform their behavior or enforce constraints. And typically this will happen within the same unit of work. If something fails, an exception will be thrown and the entire transaction will be thrown away. Integration events are used when integrating with another service across a boundary. These consumers will exist outside of the transaction and any failures would be isolated. And this is the primary difference between domain events and integration events. Domain events are not intended to leave the boundary. They have specific meaning within the boundary. However, it is the responsibility of integration events to communicate outside of the boundary. Now, the problem I was facing was that we didn't have integration events. We did have domain events and they were being consumed by listeners outside of the boundary. And not only that, those listeners were calling the third party services, which had their own side effects. Now, if we take a look at our transaction boundary, if anything happened within any of these listeners, and the entire unit of work was rolled back, the external service didn't know anything about this, and there was no compensating actions. The system was left in an inconsistent state. Now, there are many ways that we could approach fixing this problem. We could introduce a proper message broker. We could introduce the outbox pattern. But remember, this is a legacy system. It is already in the middle of being rewritten. The business had no interest in investing and in fixing this problem. The first step was to reduce the scope of the transaction. Only once the action was completed successfully did we notify any event consumers. Next, we ensured each listener was wrapped with their own transaction. This ensured that any failures didn't impact the others and didn't impact the original command. Any failures were added to a queue which could be re-driven at a later date. This solution by no means is a complete way of handling messaging within your application. And I've missed out a ton of detail and I'm sure I'll revisit it in future videos. But for now, hopefully I've explained some of the challenges that could arise when event consumers are invoked within the same transaction. But that's all for today. Take care.